Hello, my presentation is going to be on Batman today. I'm going to briefly talk about where Batman began in the comics and then briefly go through the films and then the games and then kind of discuss where the future of Batman lies. Um, first, I'm going to show you the trailer of The Dark Knight uh, to give you a taste of kind of what's been kind of described as the best film of the whole kind of Batman thing. Um, so, I'll show you the trailer now of The Dark Knight. with knives and lint. Evening, Commissioner. Why so serious? Where is he? People are dying. What would you have me do? Endure. You can be the outcast. You can make the choice that no one else will face right choice. Gotham needs you. A little fight in here. I like that. Then you're gonna love me. Now that's more like it, Miss Wayne. It's all part of the plan. Come on, hit me! How Batman began, the character was created by artist Bob Kane and writer Bill Finger. Uh, he first appeared in Detective Comics number 27 in May 1939. Um, he's known as many names like the Cape Crusader, the Dark Knight and the world's greatest detective. Uh, so who is Batman? Batman's the secret identity of Bruce Wayne, uh, a, a billionaire who uses the Batman as kind of they get revenge on Gotham City's criminals. Um, after witnessing the murder of his parents, he uses Batman to bring justice to Gotham. Uh, he's many supporting characters like Alfred, uh, sidekick Robin, uh, Jim Gordon, and sometimes Batwoman. So the comics, uh, like all superheroes, Batman originated in comic books. After the success of Superman in the late 30s, uh, there was a higher demand for superheroes. This was the time Batman was born. Uh, the costume that Batman wore changed uh, throughout his first appearances in the DC Comics. Uh, his jawline was more pronounced and he lengthened the ears in the costume. Batman proved to be a hit and he got his own solo title in 1940 called Batman. Uh, and he's still featured in Detective Comics. Batman was one of very few superhero characters that continuously published throughout the 1950s as a genre dampened down. It came under huge criticism when Frederick Wertham's book, Seduction of the Innocent, published in 1954, claimed children imitated crimes that they saw in the comic books, like copycat crimes. Uh, in the late 50s, Batman stories became more sci uh, science fiction oriented by Batman, with Batman fighting aliens and having other bizarre kind of transformations and stuff. By 1964, the sales of Batman comics uh, had fallen incredibly low and DC was planning on killing off the character altogether. Uh, the Batmobile was redesigned though, uh, because the DC comics, they employed an editor called Julius Schwartz, and he was assigned to basically revamp Batman and bring him kind of back to life and help the sales increase. Um, all the science fiction was taken out, um, and all other things were retired, like the Batwoman and Batmite and stuff like that. Uh, Alfred, was also killed off, but that decision was obviously later reversed. So Batman and movies. Batman first appeared in two serial films, 
1940s called Batman and then Batman and Robin. The 1966 film Batman was a feature film adaption of the 1960s Batman TV series featuring Adam West and Bert, uh, Bert Ward. That's actually on Netflix. I watched it the other day and it's, it's pretty funny watching it now, but obviously it was for its time it was a uh, kind of breakthrough. Uh, Warner Bros. began producing a series of Batman films in the 1980s, beginning with the 1989 film Batman. That was directed by Tim Burton and Michael Keaton as Batman. Uh, that was well received, and obviously a sequel was the, the come about. And that came in 1992, with Burton and Keaton returning for what proved to be their final Batman film. In 95, Batman Forever was released, and this time it was directed by Joel Schumacher, who starred Val Kilmer as Batman. Schumacher returned to direct the 1997 sequel Batman and Robin with George Clooney starring as Batman. This was widely criticised by fans and critics and uh, it actually got that bad of kind of reception that the whole kind of uh, series of films was stopped for a while. I want a car. Chicks dig the car. This is why Superman works alone. After the flop of that film in 1997, interest in the Batman film subsided. But in 2005, Batman Begins was released. Christian Bale was Batman and Christopher Nolan took the role of uh, directing the film. This would be the first film in a trilogy that would ultimately save Batman a film. The film grossed over $374 million worldwide. He's here. Who? The Batman. The next in the trilogy was The Dark Knight. Evening, Commissioner. Why so serious? People are dying, what would you have me do? That was released in 2008. Nolan and Bale returned to reprise their roles again. Um, Heath Ledger was in this film playing the, uh, Batman's villain, the Joker. For me, this is one of the best films that I've ever seen. And I think uh, Heath Ledger's portrayal of the Joker, and everyone was kind of thinking whether he'd kind of uh, provide any competition for Jack Nicholson. Uh, when he portrayed the Joker, but I think Heath Ledger blew, blew him out of the water, to be honest. I think he took it to a different level. That film grew to over $1 billion worldwide, won eight Academy Award nominations, with Heath Ledger winning Best Supporting Actor. And the Oscar goes to Heath Ledger in The Dark Knight. The Dark Knight Rises was released in 2012, and this was the last of the trilogy. Nolan and Bale returned to reprise the roles for the final time. The film grossed over 1.08 billion worldwide, outgrossing out its predecessor. Tom Hardy took on the role of Batman's villain called Bane, and Anne Hathaway also starring as the Cat Burglar, aka Catwoman. If you make yourself more than just a man, if you devote yourself to an ideal, then you become something else entirely. A legend, Mr. Wayne, a legend. We were in this together. And then you were gone. Christopher Nolan trilogy of Batman films is only one of two series, Pirates of the Caribbean being the other, to have two of its films earn more than $1 billion worldwide. These are just some photos of uh, the villains in Batman from uh, Nolan's trilogy. It's the Joker, Christopher Nolan, uh, Christian Bale, who played Batman, and Tom Hardy as Bane. Batman and Games. Uh, after the success of the trilogy of Batman films, uh, Obviously, a huge demand uh, for a game came about. 
In August 2009, Arkham Asylum was released. It was well received by fans and critics and won numerous awards, including Best Action Adventure Game, Best Game and Game of the Year from various gaming websites. It holds the Guinness World Record for most critically acclaimed, most critically acclaimed superhero game ever. Um, it sold over 2.5 million copies by September 2009. In October 2011, the long-awaited sequel was released called Batman Arkham City. Once again, the game won several prestigious awards, including Game of the Year again. Uh, by the start of 2012, the game had sold over 6 million units. Do you feel sad? Bruce. Full of rage. Or does that outfit help bury your feelings? In October 2013, Arkham Origins was released as a prequel to the three, two previous games in the series. It was well received by fans and critics, but it was criticised for being too similar to its predecessor. Uh, it only managed to sell half of what Arkham City sold. Um, the Batman uh, franchise in games is seen as the best kind of superhero um, games about, and I would definitely have to agree with that after playing a lot of games. There's also games for children as well, like Lego Batman. Um, the first one came out in 2008, and that won a summer awards as well, and it was, uh, received great reviews. And as of May 2012, the game has sold over 11 million copies worldwide. But then to June 2012, a sequel was released named Lego Batman 2 DC Superheroes. Uh, it was well received for its uh, story, voice acting, and gameplay. Um, it received 8.5 out of 10 from IGN. And in November, the third game in the series was released, Lego like Batman 3 Beyond Gotham. It was well received by fans and critics of the series. Uh, with hardcore gamers saying it doesn't break the mold but expands the Lego Gotham universe. Very afraid. There can be no courage without fear. No good without evil. No heroes without sidekicks. When evil threatens the universe, enemies must become allies. So the future of Batman's already been kind of sorted out as far as film and games are concerned. Uh, Batman vs Superman Dawn of Justice is the second installment of the DC Comics shared universe films and the sequel to the 2013 Superman film Man of Steel. In this film, Ben Affleck will be taking on the role of Batman and it will see Superman, Batman and Wonder Woman on the same screen for the first time. Uh, it's expected to be in March 2016. and. Uh, there was also a trailer released pretty recently as well, and I'll play it for you now. That's how it starts. The fever, the rage, the feeling of powerlessness that turns good men cruel. Uh, the future of Batman the Gaming World has also been announced with Arkham Knight being highly anticipated now for a while by fans of the Batman games. It started with a meeting. Everyone was there. 
Scarecrow said he had a plan. That together we could take you out. And Gotham would be ours. Over my dead body. I believe that was the idea. Remnants of Gotham, I have messages for you all. To the vandals who stayed behind to pick the still warm flesh from Gotham's bones. Have your fun. You are under my protection. To the cowards quaking behind the police department's walls, you will not be spared. And to Batman, I have already won. City with a vial of toxin and a few threatening words. That's how little the safety you provided was worth. And when the dawn comes, when Gotham lies in ruin and I turn my gaze to the world beyond, the legend of the Batman will be worth nothing at all. I'm Matthew Mooney and welcome to a special episode where I'll be discussing the audience for Batman. The audience for Batman is very diverse, with people from all age groups being able to enjoy the films, comics and games. No matter what your age is or what your preferences are, Batman is there in some format for you to enjoy. To date, there are 10 Batman solo movies, if you include the two serial films from the 1940s. All these 10 films combined are thought to have made around $7.5 billion worldwide at the box office. There are also a number of animated Batman films as well, targeted at younger audiences. The Batman movies have been nominated and have won numerous Academy Awards. The Dark Knight, in particular, was nominated for eight Academy Awards. Heath Ledger won for Best Supporting Actor, although he sadly passed away before the film was released. The Dark Knight also won the award for sound editing. The 1989 film Batman, directed by Tim Burton, won an Academy Award for art direction. A documentary titled Legends of the Night, was released in 2013. The idea behind this documentary was to show how Batman has impacted on people's lives. For example, it shows the stories of children who have life-threatening diseases, such as cancer and leukemia, and how Batman has inspired them to fight their disease. I was diagnosed with muscular dystrophy when I was two and a half. I, I would dream that I would wake up with superpowers one day, and when you realize that's not gonna happen, you say, well, wait a second, Batman doesn't have any powers, he does it just fine. Legend of the Night scored an impressive 8.0 on IMDb. The documentary is a non-profit film and was funded through a Kickstarter page. The proceeds made by this film have gone to charity and so far they have raised over $70,000 and many charities have already benefited from that money. Batman fans gather at events such as Comic Con in order to get an autograph or photograph with someone who has been involved in the production of Batman comics, movies or games. Some details about upcoming Batman games, comics and the films are sometimes revealed at Comic Con. A good example of this would be when the new Batman suit that Ben Affleck will wear was revealed and when the first trailer for Batman vs Superman was shown at Comic Con 2014. Tell me, do you bleed? Batman games also have a huge following and many fans are extremely passionate about them. The first game, Batman Arkham Asylum, was released in 2008 and was incredibly well received. Many fans who played the game created fan reviews and posted them on YouTube. The first few times I saw Batman Arkham Asylum, I didn't know what to make of it. Games based on comic characters generally suck, so I was careful not to get too excited about anything I saw. The fighting looked fierce, and hanging dudes from gargoyles is definitely cool, but the Dark Knight's extremely large forearms and stiff walk led me to a wait-and-see attitude. Now that I've beaten Arkham Asylum and am standing here telling you about it, it's hard to put into words how completely off my first impressions were. Batman Arkham Asylum is not only an incredible game, it's the best comic book game of all time. In total, there are three adult Batman games, and there are three Lego Batman games for children. 
Some fans of Batman even go as far as making short Batman films, and they have a pretty impressive following on YouTube. One fan created a short film called Batman City of Scars, and has received over 2 million views on YouTube, with a lot of comments praising it for its professional look. The criminals will no longer be tolerated in Gotham. That's night. It ends. Before the release of the last film Christopher Nolan's trilogy, The Dark Knight Rises, it was announced that this would be Christian Bale's last outing as the Cape Crusader. Ben Affleck was soon announced to be the next man to save Gotham from injustice, and there was a sudden outpouring of criticism for hardcore Batman fans. Many fans do not believe that Affleck has what it takes to become a great Batman, and they've even created videos displaying outrage at the casting decision. Ben Affleck? I mean, no disrespect to Ben. I mean, he's definitely earned his acting and directing chops, but Batman? You want an older Batman? You're going to pass up people like John Hamm, Carl Urban for Ben Affleck? Why? Because he's got connections in Hollywood? What? Batman, I don't think Ben Affleck when I think Batman. And I don't want to think Ben Affleck when I think Batman. Personally, I believe Ben Affleck could turn out to be the best Batman yet. I've decided to finish up with a few interviews with some Batman fans, and this is what they had to say. What was the first Batman film you watched? Uh, the first Batman film I watched was the infamous Batman and Robin, which I consider to be a so good it's bad film, and uh, enjoyably cheesy. First Batman film I can remember was, I remember watching a pirated copy of 1989 Batman with Michael Keaton and not being able to make out a hang on because it was dark anyway and it was a bad copy of it but then when I got seen it I got seen it properly and I really enjoyed it uh, Batman Forever I had it on on video What is your favourite Batman film? Uh, favourite Batman film would be either The Dark Knight or The Dark Knight Rises I mean favourite now it would probably have to be The Dark Knight uh, every time I watch it, it gets better every viewing, and not just as a superhero movie or a comic book movie. It's just, it's just a great movie. Uh, I have to say the Dark Knight. Um, I like the Tim Burton original Batman film as well, but like, they're both they're both kind of different. I mean, Christopher Nolan was going for a much more realistic, like this could happen in real life, while Tim Burton was trying to bring to life uh, Frank Miller's universe. It was much more artistic, but. Uh, so it's, it's difficult to compare the two, but I would say The Dark Knight, I prefer it over the original Batman. Who is your favourite Batman villain? My favourite Batman villain is the Scarecrow. Uh, obviously you have the Joker now, but I've always thought they must have trick with the Riddler. I think I could do the Riddler a wee bit better. I would love to see that, you know, maybe make him like a serial killer or something that leaves riddles or you know, if they were going that direction. But I think they always must have tricked with the Riddler and enjoy, enjoy the Riddler as well as the Joker. Uh, I'd have to say the Joker, but like everyone would probably say the Joker as well. Uh, I really like Scarecrow. I think he's a really good character. Like, very dark and very interesting. You don't do as much with him. Who do you think played the Joker better? Jack Nicholson or Heath Ledger? I'm gonna go with Heath Ledger on that one. Oh, definitely Heath Ledger, definitely, he just took it to another level. Nicholson was good as well, like, you know, when I grew up watching that version of the Joker and <coughs> the version from the 1960s serial as well. Can I mind his name? Is Cesar Romero or something like that? I, I can't mind the actor's name, but uh, obviously Ledger's the best out of all of them. I enjoyed Mark Hamill, Mark Hamill's voice work on the Joker as well. I always thought that was very good in the animated series. Probably Heath Ledger. Like, Jack Nicholson was pretty much playing Jack Nicholson as a Joker. Heath Ledger, you wouldn't even have known that it was Heath Ledger. If he was, uh, like, I didn't realize it was Heath Ledger the first time I saw Dark Knight. Why do you enjoy Batman so much? Uh, he's an interesting character. He doesn't have any superpowers, and that sort of makes him relatable because he has to use all his human strength to the limit. I guess just because he's, he's a normal man and, and the superhero world he's like he has all these things at his disposal but you know at the end of the day he's not bulletproof like Superman you know he's he gets he gets afraid and 
you know, he's, but it's the fact that he's trying to do the right thing and that's his backstory of losing his parents and stuff like that, you know, it's just a really interesting story. Oh, he's just a very dark superhero, you know, it's just a great universe. He has just so many villains, like, and such a, such an interesting back story and it's just, it's just really good. Have you played any of the Batman video games? If so, what games have you played and have you enjoyed them? I played the Arkham games all up to Origins and I played the first Lego Batman game and all of them were pretty enjoyable. Uh, I played um, I played Batman Forever on the Super Nintendo, which was really, really bad. Um, I played Batman Begins, which is on the PS2. And I played uh, the first three Arkham games. Favourite one probably is Arkham City. What about the comic books? Have you read any of those? Actually, surprisingly, I've never read a Batman comic. Yeah, I have I've a good collection of Batman comics now. I'm reading uh, Night of the Oils at the moment. And I remember reading Frank Miller's Dark Knight Returns and stuff like that. Uh, I read Year One and um, The Killing Joke. Do you have a favourite Batman? I go with the voice actor for the original Batman animated series. I ran for the Arkham games as well. Ah. Uh, I suppose because I grew up watching it, it was probably Michael Keaton. I thought Michael Keaton was really good. Christian Bale is obviously very good as well, but uh, I thought Val Kilmer, if he had been on a better film, you know, he would have done a good job at it, you know, but unfortunately the film Val Kilmer and George Clooney were on were hopeless, so. You know, but I, I think they were they were interesting choices as, Bat, as Batman. But my favourite was probably probably Michael Keaton. Uh probably Kevin Conroy from the animated series. Uh, I know he's not acting in it, like, but I just think his voice like was just perfect. Christian Bale, you know, he had this really like gruffy voice that's been like parodied several times before. Uh, I also like um, Michael Keaton as a Batman. I thought he was pretty good. <laughs> Do you have a favourite director of the Batman films, and why? It has to be Christopher Nolan. Uh, although I'm, uh, I really do have a nostal nostalgic towards Tim Burton's Batman's, I always kind of thought they missed the trick as well, you know, and not telling his origin stories. And they kind of, as a comic book fan, they veered off from we plot lines on the on the comics. And but Nolan kind of he took it on the kind of realistic realm. I feel like. Uh, he, he just kind of he updated Batman for the 21st century. Uh, I'd say um, I'd say Christopher Nolan, I guess, because it's, it's the Dark Knight, like, and Tim Burton. You know, he always has an artistic style to his films as well. So, has Batman affected your life in any way? Has it changed how you view things that happen in your life? Well, I do we view life any differently, but I find what he's posed quite interesting, like the whole psychological, psychological element behind him and his, the dark tones he brings and whether he's mad or not and all that interesting stuff. Mm, not really. I try and keep all that kind of stuff separate from decision making and things that go on in my life. I've, I remember times I'm, you know, feeling down. You know, I might watch a Batman movie or something, you know, to try and cheer me up, like, but. No, no, I wouldn't really say so, no. That's all for tonight's episode. Thanks for watching. Take care.